First, we are greeted by an interesting phrase, the face of possessions. A sacred object or divine treasure is almost a fiction, and every martial arts adept wants to possess it. Then we are thrown onto the battlefield. The main character, Seo Hyun, is opposed by three enemies. They demand from him the divine face of possessions and are sure that he has it. Just as if he gives it away, they promise to leave at least a corpse from him. The face of the domain is a bundle that is in the hands of the wounded protagonist. The exhausted hero stands in a bloodstained suit and shouts to the enemies that they are immortal emperors. And in an attempt to gain the face of the domain, they united to drive into a corner just one junior. Are they not afraid of the condemnation of heaven and the people of this world? Attacking the hero, they shouted that no one would know about his death. Apparently, he chose a painful death. Well, they will gladly fulfill his wish. The main character, looking at them with his amber eyes, in which there was no fear, but only complete confidence, said that he would rather die with honor than beg for mercy. At the same moment, three swords were thrust into his body, two of them in the chest, one in the solar plexus. The bundle face of possessions flew out of his hands. The hero fell to the ground, bleeding and already saying goodbye to life, while the enemies mocked saying that he loudly declared himself, but in fact turned out to be a dummy. The young man looked up and thought only of one thing, that is death. It was inevitable after all. His eyes were slowly closing, and suddenly, the face of the domain soared high into the sky. Sean and conventional signs similar to Yin Yang appeared. The hero's consciousness began to transfer him to another place. Bright lightning pierced the heavens and hit the thatched house. The young man's hand trembled. He opened his eyes and jumped up abruptly, but I didn't understand where to be. He was surrounded by an old house in which there was a stove, firewood. It was surrounded by shabby walls. The hero's head was painfully pierced by memories of the So clan, the young head, poisoning and dawn. These thoughts accumulated in his head, which made him scream. It seemed to him that his head was going to explode from the pain. The owner of this body was named Seo Hyun, and he was probably very unlucky too. Someone killed him and someone else's soul took over his body. There's no way he's going back right now. Seo Hyun's body, lying on the straw, began to glow brightly. The richness of his energy allowed him to achieve an average glow with just a brief cultivation. The door creaked and two people entered the house. One of them was really looking forward to finally seeing this damned corpse of Song Hai. The second one warned him that Song Hai and drank water with blood powder, which kills anyone in three breaths. It's been two whole hours, he's definitely dead. Seo Hyun, hearing that someone was entering, immediately jumped up to the roof and hid his presence. He immediately realized that these were the ones who killed this guy. Noticing that the place where Seo Hyun was lying was empty. They panicked and the first thing they decided to do was inform the elders. So Hyun was filled with hatred and he decided, since he was alive and occupied this body, he would take revenge on the murderers and return everything to normal. He directed the forces of his energy at these two men, from which they screamed and said goodbye to life for a moment, failing even to run out of the house. The next episode takes us to the council hall of the So clan. All its participants appear before us. A blonde-haired young man named Han Poon demanded that on such a significant day, they need to tie the knot between his brother and the daughter of the head of the so -Oni clan. His brother, whose name is Han Du, was standing next to him. The elderly head of this so clan, So Moon Ho, carries in his head thoughts that their clan has become very weak over the past years and that he cannot even object to this impudent man in any way. As you can see, he is not happy about this marriage at all. The girl was against everything that was happening. She did not want this marriage and even under threat of death, she would not marry Han Du. She was in a wheelchair. She had problems with her legs, which greatly added to the hopelessness of the situation. The advisor of the So clan, So sang entered into the dialogue. He called her names and ordered her to watch her tongue because she had no choice. Walking towards her, Han Du told her that she should, on the contrary, demonstrate her best qualities in order to seem nice, and she dares to say that he is not worthy of her. When he reached her, he grabbed her hand tightly. The girl began to struggle and scream for him to let her go. And Khan looked at her with a mad and irritated look and did not even think to let her go. Suddenly, the head of the clan appeared from behind and uncoupled their hands. Han Poon was outraged when he saw this. What is this supposed to mean? He reminded Strachana that if the fate of the clan is important to him, then he must obey their will. And that if he continues to resist, he will not look at the fact that he is the head of the clan. To which the head of Moon Ho calmly replied that his clan was very dear to him. But he was not going to calmly look at what the young master was touching even before the decision on marriage. And then the advisor intervened again and noticed that there was no point in holding on to pride if the clan did not have power. Young Mr. Khan declared his readiness to take the wayward Yun as a concubine, and in their position it was even a grace. Then the counselor turned to Yun and shouted that the decisions were made by adults and it was better for her not to resist. Suddenly, the doors opened and a dark figure appeared from them. In the silence of the night, a bright lightning struck that shone on Seo Hyun's body. Everyone from the clan immediately cast their intelligent gaze at him. 
Only the girl Yun realized with delight and joy that this was her beloved, missing brother. She was overjoyed to see him, as if her salvation had come. Only the head of the clan sat in great surprise, because he knew that Seo Hyun did not know any martial arts. The counselor saw Seo Hyun and calmed down. He was sure that he would not wake up until the morning. How? He was supposed to die. So why is he still alive? Seo Hyun pointed at the advisor and ordered him to shut up, giving him an angry look. The advisor staggered back in incomprehension and fear. Song Hyun was of the opinion that a servant was not given the right to open his mouth in the council chamber. Han Du recognized him immediately, because three years ago, he had heard about Trash without a drop of energy, who became the young head of the So clan. But now he sees that at least his tongue is hanging well. Red-haired, with mockery and a slight sneer, he called Seo Hyun Trash and ordered him to get lost, because he had not finished his dialogue with his sister yet. Seo Hyun began to walk slowly towards him. With each step, Han Du began to get more and more nervous. When Seo Hyun came close, he unexpectedly hit him so that he flew to the side and fell to the floor. Seo Hyun looked at him haughtily. Does it hurt to get rid of garbage? Seeing this, Han Poon went berserk. How dare he touch his brother? Seo Hyun noticed that he might get the same, so even if he doesn't fit. Song Hyun's eyes were shining and there was a smile on his face. You insolent bastard. Han Poon began his attack. A thought flashed through Seo Hyun's mind, so he decided to look at what these freaks are capable of. But before he could strike, his attack was stopped. It turned out to be the head of the clan. He noticed that all the power had gone out of his hand. The elder reminded him that he himself had tried to attack a child who was not yet strong, which forced him to intervene. The head held his hand behind his back. Energy began to accumulate in that hand, and he pointed it at him. Seo Hyun was impressed that the head used a secret technique, thanks to which he intervened. The red-haired son of the Han clan was hunched over, filled with resentment and anger. He took out a knife and jumped on Seo Hyun to stab him. But that was not the case. Seo Hyun enveloped himself in blue energy. It was directed directly at the enemy's neck. She was such a force that the enemy fell to the floor unconscious with a crash. The white-haired brother looked at Seo Hyun in horror. He didn't understand what nonsense it was. He didn't feel any energy flow. He just knocked Han down with one punch. Hyun's explosive power didn't consist only of energy. He used a technique that was unknown even to the head of the clan himself. The head, looking at the white-haired man from under his brows, Warned that Handu had simply lost consciousness, would soon wake up, and as for the wedding, the elder would personally visit the head of their clan, and they would discuss everything with him, and now he asked them to leave immediately. Han Poon realized that he definitely could not cope with the head of the clan, so he decided to obey and leave before the situation worsened even more. But before he left, he decided to offer So Hyun such an option that they would really fight with him at the ceremony of inheriting the title of head of the clan, and if he won, she would become his brother Handu's concubine and the clan would obey them. This didn't scare Song Hyun at all. Blue flames were still coming from his hand. He agreed to his proposal, noting that if he won, he would take his life. After these words, he smiled and a twinkle shone in his eyes. Han Poon did not understand where So Hyun got so much confidence from, but he clearly decided that he would show the futility of any of his efforts. He hoisted his brother onto his shoulder and left the council hall of the So clan. Everyone immediately looked at Song Hyun with anger and contempt. There was a frightened cry from the advisor that how So Hyun dared to attack the Han brothers with his fists, that he had forgotten his place. And why on earth did he think himself worthy of Han Poon? So Hyun should immediately run to them and beg their forgiveness on his knees. The head of Seo Moon Ho raised his hand to silence the advisor. Seo Hyun did not pay any attention to the advisor's words at all. He only took his sister and they began to return to her room. Smiling towards her brother, she nodded happily. The night sky was slightly cloudy, illuminated by a bright moon. There was a hidden warm light from the window of the house. I was delighted. Her brother, he was so cool today. If it wasn't for his appearance, these two arrogant guys would definitely not have lagged behind her. Seo Hyun brought her into the room and sat down next to her on a chair. He looked at her with a warm gaze and a warm smile lit up his face. He realized that this was a girl. After the death of So Hyun's grandfather, he is her only blood relative. He decided for himself that from today on, he would be under his strongest protection. Seeing the way he was looking at her, the girl was very embarrassed. Seo Hyun noticed that her sore legs were causing her a lot of inconvenience. He promised her that no matter what, he would certainly come up with something to cure them. He is her older brother. He will certainly put her on her feet and give her back her abilities. Upon hearing this, the girl burst into tears of happiness. But Seo Hyun was just stroking her head and smiling warmly. He got up, took her stroller and drove her to his house, with the glory that it was late and it was time to go to bed. He drove her to her bedroom and quietly closed the door. Flashbacks about his death popped up in his head again and he realized that he was already dead in that world. All three emperors who killed him are not easy people. If they become aware that he is still alive, they may well follow here through the spatial gap. 
He squeezed his eyes shut and decided to first look at the memories of this body and figure out where he ended up. His body was enveloped in blue flames again. His hair and clothes began to develop. Various symbols and signs appeared around Seo High and burning with golden color. Yansu Continent, where everyone can cultivate the energy of the earth and heaven to improve combat skills. Yansu Continent, in his native main continent, the levels of perfection were divided into the following. Beginning, Glow, Flame, Possession, Cancellation, Overcoming, Ejection, Walter Ego, Greatness and Ascension. Here, on the Yansu Continent, they are, Guidance, Foreigner, Warrior, Army, Follower, King, Success, Edge, Peace. Moreover, each of them is divided into stages, Elementary, Intermediate, Advanced and Excellent. He opened his eyes, they sparkled with a bright blue flame. Memories of the battle with Handu surfaced in his mind, and he realized that he had defeated him only because his skills were at the level of war. Anyway, the main thing for him now is to cultivate energy and improve his own skills to the maximum. He decided not to delay this decision. He sat down on the floor and enveloped himself in blue energy. Cultivation was not easy for him. He started coughing, closing his eyes, and suddenly he screamed. His body was filled with great strength. The initial flame, medium flame, advanced flame, Seo Hyun was incredibly amazed at his abilities. At one time, he rose to the advanced flame. By the standards of this world, this is an advanced warrior. Suddenly, the door to his room suddenly opened and a dark figure appeared. It was the head of the Seo clan, Seo Moon Ho. He was frighteningly hostile and came to find out who this man was. The head was sure that this was some kind of foreigner. He understood that according to his body's memories, he was an elder, Seo Moon Ho. And unlike the other elders, he has an unusual past. The next episode takes us back 20 years. A young Seo Moon Ho appears before us. He is exiled by the former head of the Seo clan, Seo Hyun's grandfather. He expels him for not putting the traditions of the clan into anything. Seo Moon Ho lived idly and riotously until he finally angered the former head of the Seo clan, for which he was punished. Left without a clan, he traveled the world and improved his abilities day by day. He fought with various evil spirits, lived in the north and ate whoever he killed. In fact, Seo Moon Ho lived with a burning desire to return home. But in order not to shame the clan, he went further and further in his training. Seo sang Gu is the elder of Seo. A few years later, the head of the So died after losing control of the energy during the improvement. The previous head stated that his grandson Seo Hyun should take this place next. However, the boy was too young at that time, as a result of which a power struggle broke out and chaos reigned in the So clan. Kaewasong, who returned home a couple of years later with Moon Ho, settled the situation thanks to his abilities, took over the post of head himself and stood up for the clan. And now, from the memories, we are transported back to the dialogue between Seo Hyun and the head of Seo Moon Ho. When Seo Hyun not an o, the former owner of this body suddenly declared himself at the age of 16. The head of course drew attention to this anomaly. The foreman was amazed at the abilities and skills of this boy, which he demonstrated in the council hall. It amazes his imagination. The head was waiting for a convincing explanation, starting with how Seo Hyun went over his limit today and ending with the reason for the dramatic improvement in his abilities. Seo Hyun began to calmly explain everything to him that the head knows perfectly well that since childhood he was talented. But Seo Hyun had a lot of envious people who added something to his food. And to protect him, his grandfather ordered to hide his talent for his own good. He pretended to be sick and had been secretly improving his abilities in the mountains for the past three years. This explanation sufficiently convinced the head of the truth of his words. Seo Hyun has already started shouting that Seo Sang-gu tried to poison him with blood powder because he wanted to occupy the post of head. It is not difficult to understand the range of his motives. What? Seo Sang-gu poisoned Seo Hyun. The elder did not believe what he had heard. But what surprised the head most was that Seo Hyun hid his abilities for three whole years, waiting for the right moment. The former head planned it that way. Seo Hyun is the only hope for the rebirth of the clan. The head felt ashamed, because Seo Hyun suffered a lot because of his negligence. Bowing his head in front of him, the elder began to ask Seo Hyun for forgiveness. But Seo Hyun didn't hold a grudge against him. He had long ago decided to put all his sorrows in the past. He touched his hand as a sign of forgiveness. But Seo Hyun promised that he would not leave everything like that. And the Han clan would teach Seo Hyun a lesson at the title inheritance ceremony, and Seo Sang-gu would get his way. The head was scared. He understood that the young head was now at the war level. But Han Poon is a strong man with abilities that grow daily. The head warned Seo Hyun that he should not underestimate Han Poon. But he need not worry about Sangu. The head will deal with him himself. So Han completely trusted the words of the head. The excitement left him immediately. But Seo Hyun was worried about another issue, about clan medicine. 
But the elder calmed him down and said that tomorrow his servant would bring everything he needed. But in order to get clan medicine, the head of the So clan climbed into his cloak and took out a brown token with a red symbol on it. With this token, Seo Hyun will have access to all clan medicine. If So Hyun needs anything else, he can contact the elder at any time. With these words, Streshina got up and began to go to his room, because the day had long come to an end. Seo Hyun thanked him and put the token away. The elder came out of Seo Hyun's house and saw a man in a black raincoat and a hood covering his eyes watching them on the roof. The stranger smiled and admitted that he was unbearably interested. The elder realized that he was referring to the energy of the young head. The stranger added that the source of Seo Hyun's power is somewhat different from what everyone is used to. He was interested in this, because this was the first time he had encountered it. The head was struck by this fact, and he admitted that it was really interesting. But from now on he forbade the stranger to appear in front of him, and so that he would not even think of pestering the young head. With these words, the elder turned around and went to his room. The stranger then told the elder that he would not disobey him. But there was an insidious smile on his face, and his eyes were hidden under a spear, and his palm holding a fist made it clear to us that he would not leave it like that. The next episode throws us into the morning. The main character just got up and pulled himself up, yawning loudly. Seo Hyun realized that because he had increased his level so rapidly, now simple cultivation would not be enough. Now, in order not to slow down, he will have to resort to food pills. In order for So Hyun to survive in a world ruled by strong cultivators, he needs to return to his peak of opportunity as soon as possible. His thoughts were interrupted by a servant. On the order of the head, he brought the medical supplies he had requested to So Hyun. He handed the young head a box with them. Seo Hyun opened it and was amazed, because on the main continent, any of these ingredients would have to be searched for several days. He liked the fact that all he had to do here was ask for them. But So Hyun had to recycle them. He didn't have the tools, so he decided to do it with his energy. He held up two fingers and a blue flame appeared. It grabbed the ingredients and began to process them. Seo Hyun noticed that on his main continent, his ingredients, which he extracted himself, allowed him to process only the simplest pellet, except for the first class. But the ingredients here are so amazing that he will receive a level of the third class immediately. His clothes and hair developed due to the power that came from Seo Hyun. In his hand, a golden ball appeared from the ingredients, which he immediately ate. He realized, given this, before the ceremony, he would be able to achieve much more than what he had hoped for. After swallowing this ball, he felt a huge force in his hands. Suddenly, an indignant voice was heard outside the door. She asked the counselor why he had come here and ordered him to leave. She threatened him with words that if he continued to climb up to her brother, she would not allow them to do so, that she would give her life for him. The head servant opened his fan, which lit a fire. The counselor reminded her that her brother was already dead, and the one who appeared yesterday was an imposter. But I wasn't even going to listen to his nonsense. And again she began to insist that he get out. These words infuriated the advisor. His eyes turned black, and he realized that words couldn't reach her. She angered him so much that he decided to kill her, sending her to her dead brother and attacked her. The girl screamed in fright and had already begun to say goodbye to life, when suddenly a blue lightning threw the advisor aside. The doors opened and Seo Hyun appeared, with blue flames coming from him. He was furious, because who does he think he is? How dare he go to his sister with such intentions? The servants ran up and everyone was shocked, because it was. It was just a ghost fire. How does a puny brat like So Hyun have ratty level abilities? The counselor lying on the floor began to shout that this was impossible. No, this is all nonsense. Suddenly, someone touched his head. He angrily turned to the advisor that he had warned him not to climb, and that he was on the verge and the head was not going to joke with him. The girl did not remain silent. She immediately told the head that the advisor had tried to kill her and her brother. The old man was surprised that yesterday Seo Hyun amazed everyone with his abilities, and today he also decided to demonstrate the ghost fire. The advisor was visibly frightened. Stuttering, he began to prove the opposite. That he did not even think of harming her, but just came to check on her. But it only flashed through the head of the head that if he had not been an advisor to the So clan, he would have ended his life with his own hands. The head of the clan abruptly removed his hand from his head and warned everyone that from now on, without his permission, no one should interfere with the training of the young head. All the servants and the counselor began to bow and agree. Seo Hyun approached her with a question about how she was, if she was too scared. She grabbed his arm sharply. A girl sitting in a wheelchair with tears in her eyes began to clarify whether it was her brother. She was so surprised by his strength that she began to doubt if it was really her brother. Seo Hyun realized that she had noticed something strange. The most important thing for Seo Hyun was to remain calm. Smiling uncertainly and scratching his head, Seo Hyun began to convince his sister that it was definitely him and was significantly surprised that she even began to doubt him. 
The sister immediately became embarrassed and tried to justify herself. But Seo Hyun interrupted her and said that it was time for them to go to the pharmacy because he promised to cure her legs. Seo Hyun took the stroller and drove his sister to the direction of the pharmacy. While the red-haired Handu was watching them around the corner of the house, his whole face was still scarred, his teeth were knocked out, and his head was bandaged. Meanwhile, Seo Hyun and Unni reached the pharmacy. The young head of the clan said that he needed to buy one special ingredient. The seller, absolutely without any interest and enthusiasm, told him to choose everything he needed himself. Seo Hyun didn't like it, and taking out of his pocket the token that the head of Seo Moon Ho gave him yesterday, he said that it was better if the owner himself found what Seo Hyun would tell him. The owner jumped up from his seat when he saw the token. After all, this token meant that the young head of the So clan was talking to him. The pharmacy owner instantly changed his manners. He immediately became polite, smiling and friendly. And he began to ask customers what they were interested in at his pharmacy. Seo Hyun handed him a piece of paper on which was depicted a mushroom with a yellow cap and a grey leg. It was wrapped with some kind of yellow thread. Seo Hyun said he needed a forever risey mushroom. The seller took the piece of paper and confessed to So Hyun that the century-old risey mushroom is very rare and that it is almost impossible to find it, even in their Kwasong, and even more so in the pharmacy. The owner himself had only seen him in books he had read as a child. The hero thought about it. How is that? The mushroom, which is widespread on the main continent, turned out to be very rare here. After seeing So Hyun withdraw into himself, she decided to resolve the situation, saying that it was okay and that she was ready to sit in a wheelchair for the rest of her life, as long as her brother was there. Seo Hyun and Unni realized that they had nothing left to do at the pharmacy, so they left. But they were unexpectedly met by Handu and his servants. The red-haired Handu began to laugh at Seo Hyun. Allegedly he went to the pharmacy to buy herbs, cook pills from them and thereby improve his abilities. When Song Hyun saw him, he wasn't scared at all. On the contrary, he became overwhelmed with anger, realizing that Song Hyun wasn't scared at all. Han went berserk and shouted that his servants would immediately attack him and beat him half to death. Song Hyun understood that yesterday he would have had a hard time against such a crowd. But now, he easily dodged all their attacks and knocked them down on the spot. Through this crowd, he got close to Han Du. The only thing the red-haired man managed to do was regret that he had poked his nose at Song Hyun. The young head knocked Han Du down again with one blow, using his technique. A lot of people began to gather around. Everyone was wondering what kind of commotion was going on there. Many recognized the red-haired son of the Kong clan. Han Poon was passing by with his guards. When he saw a large crowd of people, he became interested. He came closer and saw his brother lying on the ground. Han Du was in terrible shape. He had been beaten before and his wounds had not had time to heal, as new ones were inflicted on him again. Han Poon ran up to him and gently put his head on his lap. He started yelling at Seo Hyun, trying to find out what he had done to Han Du. He shouted at the servants, trying to figure out how this could happen and how they allowed it. The servants were terribly frightened. They began to justify themselves by saying that everything happened in the blink of an eye and that they didn't even have time to react. Only Song Hyun was good. He explained to Han Poon that Han Du was trying to provoke him again and that he was just teaching him a lesson, and tried to calm Han Poon down by saying that Han Du did not die, but just got off with light punches. But these words angered the white-haired Khan Poon even more. He couldn't leave it like that. Moreover, the head was not there and nothing stopped him. He jumped up and was ready to strike, as someone abruptly told him to stop. The young lord of the Kam clan and the elderly elder of the HWE Gaul clan appear before us. The lord of the Kam clan does not tolerate such recklessness in his presence. Han Poon furiously began to explain that Seo Hyun had maimed his younger brother, and he just couldn't stand by just watching it. The elders of the HWE Gaul clan noticed that the boy had unusual abilities and immediately informed the young lord of the Kam clan in his ear. The young master decided to side with Seo Hyun and ordered Han Poon not to say anything more. And he decided to introduce himself. His name was Kam Mu Jin. And he asked what the name of this strong and brave boy was. Seo Hyun introduced himself. But then her sister intervened. She asked her brother to leave because she became scared and that she did not want to be here at all anymore. Seo Hyun smiled warmly again and put his hand on her head and agreed. Kam Mu Jin, or the young lord of the Kam clan, noticed that there was a serious disagreement between Seo Hyun, Han Poon and Han Du and offered Seo Hyun his help in this. But Song Hyun only said after that, of course, he appreciates his gesture very much, but he cannot accept his offer, and that it was time for him to go now, so they would return to this dialogue some other time. To which Ko Moon Jin only smiled slyly. The next episode throws us to the elder's house. In front of us is a leaf with the image of the century-old risey mushroom. It is held in the hands of the head of the clan. He explains to Soha and Unni that the century-old mushroom grows in an extremely dangerous place and asks Seo Hyun if he really wants to go there. 
Without any doubt in his eyes, Seo Hyun firmly replied that he would do it for his sister's sake. But the head really did not want Seo Hyun to go there, so he decided to put pressure on the other side, telling him that he was not allowed to put the heir's life at such risk. But Seo Hyun was not going to give up so quickly, in which case he suggested that the head of the clan go with him, because then the risk would be many times less. The elder only exhaled, but immediately remembered his promise that he would help So Hyun in case of need. And his principle was that he did not intend to take back the words, and told So Hyun that the head was completely at his disposal. Seo Hyun was incredibly surprised and even a little confused by how much the head of the clan was fired up by this. The girl remembered the young lord of the Kong clan and decided to ask the head if he knew him. Upon hearing about him, the elder abruptly turned to him. He was terribly scared because he realized that the Kong clan had already arrived here. The head ran up to So Hai and began shouting that it was necessary to remember once and for all that under no circumstances should they be angered. Seo Hyun staggered back from the unexpected outburst of emotion from the head. The young head became curious about what kind of clan it was that even the elder was so scared. The head thought about how best to convey everything to Song Hyun and began his story. The Kam clan is one of the three best in the Green Cloud Empire. Against their background, the clan looks like a newborn baby. The Yongsu continent includes four empires, a storm, a green cloud, a frosty sky and a spiritual beast. The largest and, accordingly, the strongest among them is the Empire of the Storm. But both the frosty sky and the green cloud try to keep up. The Spirit Beast Empire is dominated by werewolves and it also plays an important role in the Yansu continent and, by the standards of ability, deserves to stand on a par with the other three. The Kong Clan is one of the three leading associations in the Green Cloud, and their influence covers the entire empire. Even their imperial family has to reckon with them. It began to dawn on the elder that Seo Hyun had enlisted the support of this Kong Clan, and if so, then the abilities of this clan would grow significantly. The elder scratched his beard and warned Seo Hyun that Han Poon's strength was at the level of an average army, but his abilities would still grow and he was already close to advanced or even superior strength. The head decided that it would be possible to deal with the issue of the century-old rising mushroom later. Now, after all, the most important thing is to prepare for the ceremony of succession of the head. Seo Hyun did not respond to this, only thanked the elder for his enlightenment and decided to return to his training. The head crossed his fingers and wished So Hyun a good workout. The young head took the stroller with his sister and left the elder's house, but someone was already waiting for him on the street behind the pillar. A plump teenager with short hair approached So Hai. It was his brother So Man Siok. Seeing that it was true, Seo Hai and So Man Siok threw himself into his arms in tears. Man Siok missed his brother very much and after hearing all these frightening news about him, he immediately came to them. Seo Hai was very happy with him, only the girl watched with displeasure as they hugged. Wiping tears from his eyes, Seo Man Seok told him that their father was very much reproaching himself for not being able to help Seo Hyun for so many years. But now everything has changed. From now on Seo Hyun will have full support and you don't have to worry. Seo Hyun put his hand on his brother's shoulder and thanked him for his kindness. Seo Man Seok's younger cousin did not possess any cultivation qualities, so he helped the Seo clan in other moments from childhood. Heaven gifted him with an excellent talent for commercial business, thanks to which he earned a decent amount of money and with it the nickname Tolstomus of the So clan. Seo Man Seok turned his head away from embarrassment, informed Seo Hyun that he was going to meet Bi Ki, and invited him along. Seo Hyuk tried to remember who Bi Ki was. Seo Hyun has almost no memories of Song Bi Ki. If you strain your brain, you can only find that she is the daughter of Dad's sister, that is, Seo Hyun's cousin, who left for the capital. But the young head did not understand why she would visit Kawensen. But nevertheless, Seo Hyun agreed. It obviously wouldn't hurt to just take a look at her. Then we move to the marina. All vessels on it belong to the Bayou. The Bayou is a shipping transport group. Seo Man Siok told Seo Hyun that he had signed a contract with Stream to deliver all the heavenly orchids from Surabaya to the pharmacy of the Seo clan. As a result, having monopolized the production of small pills in the city, the clan began to make money from it. A small pill is a means of divine medicine. Seo Hyun never stopped being surprised by his brother. His lack of combat talents is fully compensated by his business skills. Seo Man Siok suddenly stopped. A fascinating marina opens up in front of us. The blue sea, mountains in the background and boats resting on the water. It's also incredibly beautiful. Man Sok shouted enthusiastically that Bi Ki's ship was on the way. Taking Seo Hyun's hand, they ran towards the ship. Moon Ho said that her father was accepted into the Kong clan. But its members themselves are silent about it, as if they had filled their mouths with water. 
Man so hurried Seo Hyun and promised him that she would definitely be surprised by his presence. A large ship sails to the pier. A girl of insane beauty appears before us. She has very beautiful blue eyes and blonde hair, like the light of the night stars. She has a purple kimono that highlights her good figure, and a red sword hangs from her belt. She leaves the ship with her servant. Noticing her, Seo Hyun saw that she hadn't changed at all. She was still as beautiful as she was in childhood. Brother Man Seok explained to Seo Hyun that in eight years Beek he had reached the level of the army in strength and that this time she sailed here with a letter of recommendation to join Hyung Chan. Seo Hyun was very surprised by this, because the great Han Poon reached the level of Ratty only at the age of 20, but Beek he was able to at 15. She's obviously very cool. Beek he noticed some commotion in the crowd. It was So Man Seok. He picked up a flag and began waving it to attract her attention and called her. Without giving it much thought, she followed on. But Man Seok ran towards her, pushing people aside, waving his hand and shouting that he was her cousin. He ran up to her, said that they had not seen each other for a long time and reached out to shake her hand. But Beek he pulled it away and said contemptuously that she was glad to see you. Man Seok laughed awkwardly, complimented her that she had only become more beautiful over the years, and said that Brother Hyun had come with him, that now he was the young head of the Seo clan. The girl froze. Did Seo Hyun become the head? She shifted her gaze to the side where the young head was standing, to which Seo Hyun only greeted him questioningly. Suddenly, a shout was heard to get all the onlookers out of the way. It was Han Poon and his servants. He approached Bi Ki and told her that his father had organized a banquet in honor of her arrival and extended his hand to her. But suddenly he saw Seo Hyun standing behind her, and he mockingly told Bi Ki that if he had known that she would languish in the company of these worms, he would have come to meet her earlier. And I apologized for that. She said that he shouldn't apologize, but that on the contrary, she was sorry that she had caused trouble for her brother. Beek he knew that because Han Poon had accepted her father into the clan, she and the Seo clan had managed to maintain a relationship. Han Poon calmed her down, telling Beek he that she wasn't giving them any trouble. After all, their Han clan was the first in Kwangseong. They couldn't have descended to the level of the Seo clan, from which only two scum greeted the guest of honor. The girl smiled and gently asked if she could take the brothers Seo Hyun and Man Seok with her to the banquet. Han Poon arrogantly agreed. He was being kind and would let them eat anyway. Seo Hyun didn't like it. He said it wasn't worth it, called Man Seok and noticed that he wouldn't waste this geek's time. Han Poon began to irritably shout hate words after him indignantly. Seo Hyun compared him to a dog who is always barking at everyone, and even very loudly. Beek he waved her hand and said that they should leave. If they don't want to go to the banquet so much, it's not worth forcing them by force. When Han Poon saw Beek he leave, he shouted that Seo Hyun was lucky this time, but he wouldn't leave it like that next time. Man Seok saw that Beek he had changed a lot and asked Seo Hyun if he knew why. Seo Hyun explained this by saying that she has an outstanding talent. Plus she has lived in the capital for so long, it is safe to say that Beek he belongs to a completely different world than they do. Seo Hyun noticed a long time ago that it was quite a common phenomenon when people on the main continent also became different when they moved to large cities. Mon Ho exhaled sadly, but he was worried about the question. So Hyun's brother is also very talented, and now he is also the young head of the clan, but he still remains the same. Seo Hyun doubted that there were people like him in the world. He exhaled and thought that sooner or later Man Seok would definitely find out about it. Episode We are greeted by a training Seo Hyun. He stands in the middle of the garden. His body is shrouded in blue flames. The young head raised his hands up, his eyes burning with golden flames. He took a stance and thrust his fist forward. A large shock wave went out of the fist. Seo Hyun called this technique the explosive fist. This blast wave hit a tree and blew it to pieces. Seo Hyun happily noticed that he was expected to be good with his energy. The explosive fist using innate kai. Innate kai is the purest form of martial arts. By increasing his abilities, Seo Hyun will surpass anyone with the level of a follower. The explosive fist technique was adopted after the fall of the Tang Dynasty from the Beast, the military mentor of Prince Ying Zhu Yugui. Hitting an opponent, you can direct energy to increase the diameter of kai and thereby kill him on the spot. The diameter of Kai is explosive power. The ceremony is in three days, and before it starts, Seo Hyun must hone this technique. Then we are transported to the elder's house. The head of the clan was drinking hot tea, which was steaming. The old man looked up somewhere and turned to his dead brother. The head asked him very much to keep an eye on the clan from heaven, so that the tragedy of 30 years ago would not happen again. There was a poster of a man on the wall, and the head addressed him. In three days, there is a training area in front of us. There were a lot of people there. Among them were Unni and Seo Man Seok's brother. They were rooting loudly for Seo Hai. Some people next to them laughed awkwardly. Some were outraged by this and asked them not to make so much noise, and warned that anyone who hears this will think that Seo Hai and has become the head of the clan. 
Outraged, she began to object that Seo Hyun had occupied this post for a long time. Man Seok, calming down, began to apologize, saying that she is usually calm, but today this child is too inspired by the fight. The head of the Seo clan, Seo Moon Ho, raised his hand and everyone immediately fell silent. Strashina announced that the succession ceremony was being declared open. Seo Hyun entered the battlefield. Next to him stood the judge, the fourth elder of the clan. After seeing Seo Hyun, people started to rebel. What is my title? He must know his place. They were huffing and shouting at him to leave on his own. And they even started throwing garbage at him. Seo Hyun, paying absolutely no attention to them, came and sat down on a chair next to the head of the clan. The judge cleared his throat and ordered everyone to be silent, because now they are. The judge was interrupted by a shout that the young lord of the Kam clan had arrived. Flags and fans with the inscription Kam appeared. The Kam clan appeared. Among the familiar faces there were Han Poon, Biki, an elderly elder of the HWE Gal clan, and they were all led by the young lord of the Kam clan, Ko Man Jun. All the girls in the crowd immediately had hearts in their eyes. They began to admire the young Mr. Kam, saying that he was very cool and also incredibly cute. One man in the crowd considered it as groupy as possible, because there is no point in screeching just from appearance, you will not be very well fed from it. Upon seeing the Kam clan, everyone from the Seo clan visibly felt a lot of tension. Only Seo Hyun and the advisor sat as if nothing had happened, and even a smile appeared on their faces. It's clear why Seo Hyun wasn't scared, but here's the advisor. Something is not clean here. The head of the clan was more concerned about the fact that the Khan clan and Kam still got along. It's very strange. Seo Hyun's showdown with Han Poon is too insignificant an event for the Kam clan. So why are they here? Did the Khan come under their full protection? Han Poon came forward and began to scold everyone that young Mr. Kam himself had paid them a visit. Why was no one meeting him? What kind of disrespect is that? The head of the clan apologized and admitted that they had not expected their appearance. Seo Hyun stood up and put his hand on the head's shoulder, saying that if they had warned in advance of their intention to come, then all the inconveniences could have been avoided. The young head was wondering what had brought their clan here. Young Mr. Kong Mong Jun just laughed and apologized if he had possibly disturbed them. He said that he had just heard the news about the confrontation between brother Seo Hyun and Han Poon, and that's why he came to support him. The whole Seo clan was in shock from what they heard, because the young master called Seo Hyun brother. But Seo Hyun just thanked him with a smile on his face, and asked to allocate a place for young Mr. Kong. The head of the clan turned to Seo Hyun with shock and began to ask him why. After just one meeting, young Mr. Kam calls him brother, how did it happen? To which Seo Hyun spread his hands and suggested that perhaps he was expressing his favor in this way. Then the judge spoke again. He reminded everyone that those who do not agree with the transfer of the clan title to this person, pointed at Seo Hyun, are free to challenge him. Han Poon began to knead his fists, foreshadowing an imminent battle. But before that, he turned to the young lord of the Kam clan and reminded him that he had said that he would take a man from the Han clan to study in his clan. Looking at Han Poon from under his brows, he objected that he would only do it if Han Poon defeated Seo Han. Han Poon replied without any doubt that today this jerk would get a full one and he should not worry. The gentleman just looked at him with contempt and said that he was really looking forward to it, but there was sarcasm in his words. The judge invited all the objectors to step onto the court. Suddenly, a black figure appeared above the people. She shouted that there were rumors that the young head had recently beaten the son of the Kong clan. He jumped onto the battlefield and introduced himself. His name is Dong John and he asked to mentor him against Seo Hyun in a duel. But the judge quickly stopped him, saying that only the younger generation of the So clan could challenge, and the rest could only watch. A man very similar to Jun John appeared on the battlefield. It was his father So, and objected to the judge, because Jun John belongs to this generation. He ran up to his son and they showed their thumbs up and simultaneously said that Jun John was 16 years old. Everyone was amazed at this, because he didn't look like that age at all. The judge allowed the fight to take place after what he heard. Chen Zhang got into a fighting pose and hoped that the young head was ready to fight with him. The next chapter greets me with Haiyan. Jun Zhang is standing in front of him. The people in the crowd were laughing, and the odds were 20 to 1 on Seo Haiyan. Everyone was sure that with Jun Zhang's skills, he could easily defeat at least 20 Falcon. Clenching his fists, Jun Zhang warned that he was about to attack. He crouched down and then jumped out towards Seo Haiyan. He decided to show So Haiyan what real abilities look like. When he was already very close, right next to the falcon, he managed to jump back up. Seo Hyun mockingly and sarcastically admitted that he couldn't stand it. Seo Hyun turned over in the air, gathering the impact force in his hand, and aimed it at Jun Jong's head. Seo Hyun noticed that even the most brilliant and powerful attack in the world is useless if you can't hit your opponent with it. Jun Jong fell to the ground with a crash from such a blow, his nose bled profusely, and he screamed. This insanely insulted him and he sat up and tried to attack Seo Hyun again. 
but the young head returned without any problems and gave him a slap on the neck. Dust rose on the battlefield from their struggle. All the observers were trying to see who won there in the end. When the dust cleared, the astonished people saw Jun John lying on the ground and standing next to him without a scratch so high. The young head began to give the defeated Jun advice that he should train to hit the enemy, not to hesitate, but also not to rush madly. The advisor of the Seo clan clenched his fists and admitted that Seo Hyun's abilities were impressive. The counselor called two men in white cloaks to him. He handed them a box with two balls and ordered them to eat them so that they could resist the falcon. The head was amazed that the advisor was cheating so openly, but did not say anything. Man Siok's enthusiastic voice was heard from the crowd. He shouted that his brother was the best, because he was able to praise this cabinet of muscles without straining at all. These two men in white cloaks entered the battlefield. They pulled off their cloaks and presented. One of them was named Seo Yong Jin, the other Seo Bi Ko. They asked permission from the young head to instruct them in battle. Seo Moon Siok's brother thought about it, and Seo Hyun asked if he knew them. Man Sok explained that Seo Young Jin and Seo Bi Ko are the grandchildren of Seo Sang Gu. They were both born very talented, and they are currently the most promising disciples of the So clan. And they also seem to have a special fusion technique that is found only in vicious clans. By combining their energy, they double their abilities. But these words did not scare Seo Hyun at all. On the contrary, he just decided for himself that in this case he would have to take them seriously. Seo Young Jin and Seo Bi Ko started attacking. They screamed and energy appeared from their bodies. The young lord of the Kong clan realized with horror that besides Seo Hyun, there were two other people with a level of strength no less than the average army. Anyway, the So clan is pretty strong. Han Poon told the young master with a joyful smile that they were the grandchildren of Seo sang -gu, so he shouldn't worry. He believed that the young master had noticed how close his Han clan was to him. The young master only said that he wanted to watch their duel first. Meanwhile, the brothers continued to release their energy. They connected their fingers to each other. The red-haired Seo Young Jin had energy in the form of a dragon, and the white-haired Seo Bi Ko had energy in the form of a tiger. They both popped into their mouths the marbles that the counselor had given them at the end, and they began to attack with a technique called Dragon and Tiger Strike. Seo Bi Ko stood with his feet on Seo Young Jin's arms and his arm strength sent him towards Seo Hyun with incredible speed. The young head was amazed, because the energy of these two is clearly stronger, and that he will not be able to relax in their battle. The white-haired man used the lethal outcome shade and Seo Hyun and Seo Bi Ko's fists touched. The force was so powerful that the floor began to fall apart. Confident of Seo Hyun's defeat, Han Poon joyfully sat down on a chair and realized that he didn't even have to dirty his hands. The elders of the KHWE Gaul clan noticed Han Poon's behavior and were amazed at his arrogance. Well, what a shame. But Song Hyun didn't even think about dying. The brother's attack did absolutely no damage to him, and he told them that the fusion technique they were using was not being used like that. Seo Bi Ko staggered back in horror and anger, but the second attack was not long in coming. The white-haired man attacked once more, shouting for Seo Hyun to take back his words. The chapter begins with an attack on Seo Hyun by Seo Bi Ko. He tried to hit him with his fist, but Seo Hyun easily dodged this attack by jumping up. Seo Hyun decided to launch an air attack again. He rolled over and punched the air with his fist. Seo Bi Ko laughed at this technique and threw back the response energy from his body. But it was not there. He was connected to his brother with energy. Therefore his brother suffered from his release, receiving severe damage. Seo Yong Jin shouted at his brother to shoot both arrows. Because Seo Hyun is by no means an ordinary person, Seo Hyun landed on the ground and mockingly asked them if they were already tired because he hadn't even warmed up yet. These words infuriated Seo Bi Ko. He made a strong attacking strike at Seo Hyun again. This blow blew up the place where Seo Hyun was standing, and a fire was formed around him. But Seo Hyun came out of this fire completely unscathed. The young head stood between Seo Bi Ko and Seo Young Jin. The blue flame from his hands headed towards them. This attack pierced both of them, so that they both fell unconscious to the ground. The young lord of the Kam clan smiled, because he knew that all this would happen. Han Poon cursed to himself, because he understood that these two were already so strong, they also drank extra magic balls, which gave them even more strength. Seo Hyun really won. Moreover, he didn't get a single scratch on the battlefield. People immediately changed their minds about Seo Hyun. They realized he really deserved to be the head of the Seo clan, and everyone started rooting for him. Bi Ki's sister was also completely shocked. She couldn't recognize Seo Hyun because he was completely different before. Seo Hyun only stood haughtily over the rivals he had just knocked down on the spot. The young head said that their duel was just a waste of time. 
Upon hearing this, Seo Bi Kyan and Seo Young Jin jumped to their feet, but Seo Hyun calmly explained to them that their fusion technique is the pride of the entire Seo clan. But cheating by taking pills before a duel is not forgivable, and if they do this again, he will punish not only them, but also the one who gave them these pills. Resigned to their defeat, they promised to take into account the instructions of the young head, and thanked him, left the battlefield. The judge shouted loudly that Seo Hyun had defeated all the contenders who were against his rebellion to the throne, Seo Hyun to become the rightful head of the Seo clan. But the judge was interrupted by the loud voice of Han Poon objecting. He told the judge not to jump to conclusions, because Seo Hyun had only defeated a couple of weirdos. He and Seo Hyun had an agreement that they had to fight. With that, Han Poon stood in front of Seo Hyun. They both lit up with a blue flame of energy. Seo Hyun confidently said that he had not forgotten about their duel for a second and was looking forward to the opportunity to teach him a lesson for assaulting his sister. Then Han Poon suggested that we start immediately. Lightning struck between them, hatred. The young lord of the Kam clan turned to Becky with a question about who she thought would win in the end. She did not hesitate to be sure of Han Poon's victory, because he has an advanced army, and all of Kiwensiang. There is basically no one equal in strength to Han Poon, and even Seo Hyun is also powerless in front of him. But before the start of the fight, Han Poon decided to clarify what level of strength Seo Hyun had. Seo Hyun thoughtfully replied that it was probably the initial army. He reached the possession of this power, and stopped at it. Hearing this, Han Poon laughed out loud. Now he realized that his previous victories were just the result of his luck, not his abilities. Will his luck save him from his technique? Han Poon attacked Seo Hyun with his technique called Secret Technique. The highest gate technique is absolute zero. This shockwave was directed with terrible force at Seo Hyun. Even all the people watching the fight began to run screaming from their seats. They were afraid that this incredible energy would hit them with its shockwave. Only little sister and brother Man Seok stood still. She covered her face with her hands and squeezed her eyes shut. When the energy dissipated a little, the little sister opened her eyes and saw with horror that Seo Hyun's body was completely covered with ice and the young head stood motionless. The head of the Seo clan had already begun to say goodbye to Seo Hyun. He was sure that Seo Hyun had died from such an attack. A joyful Han Poon realized that he had overestimated Seo Hyun, and it was not difficult for him to defeat him. But suddenly, the ice surrounding Seo Hyun's body began to crack and break. Seo Hyun was completely unharmed and warned that it was his turn to attack. Seo Hyun released energy from his body, thereby splitting the remaining ice on it. Seo Hyun gathered the energy in his fist and directed it at Han Poon in the form of a huge ice dragon. This technique is called Fury of the Snow Dragon. Han Poon only laughed when he saw his pathetic attempts to attack, and he held out his hand to ward off her attack. Meanwhile, Seo Hyun's attack was not long in coming. The dragon was flying at Han Poon at breakneck speed. Han Poon responded by sending a second ice dragon. He tore Seo Hyun's attack to shreds. The ground began to shake and crack from such intense fighting. They both soared into the air and attacked each other. They raised heavy smoke, which made Han Poon unable to see Seo Hyun. He shouted at the young head that he was a coward and was deliberately hiding from him. Meanwhile, Seo Hyun realized that there was no benefit from his attacks. After all, Han Poon is very strong. The smoke around Seo Hyun dissipated. The young head realized that he had to resort to a bunch of skills. An incredible force lifted Seo Hyun into the air. His body was enveloped in blue magic. It lined up in the form of a cross. He directed this energy at Han Poon. But even this attack was useless. Han Poon only shouted, Today is the last day when the head was remembered alive. Seo Hyun ignored Han Poon's words and used the reverse explosive fist technique. The entire battlefield became enveloped in a blue dome. The head of the clan stood in shock, because overnight Seo Hyun froze the air and changed the direction of the flow of energy in his veins. Seo Hyun's control never ceased to truly amaze him. Finally, Seo Hyun's attack dealt damage to Han Poon. He didn't understand how Seo Hyun got such power, but the damage did not prevent him from using the next, one of the most powerful techniques, called Heavenly Blizzard. Han Poon did not even imagine that he would have to use a bunch against such scum. Han Poon was sure that Seo Hyun would not be able to return from this, and he was right. Han Poon's attack hit him with such force that he bled from his mouth. The young head flew high to the side and fell to the ground with a crash. His whole appearance became crumpled because he didn't even have time to defend himself. Han Poon laughed out loud and decided to point out to So Hyun that there was a huge difference between them. The young head must admit defeat and humbly accept death. Seo Hyun laughed at these words and confidently noticed that he had not even started yet. The young head could not be defeated so easily. Han Poon was enraged by these words, and he was going to attack again to silence Seo Hyun. The young head jumped from his seat and realized that it was necessary to attack first. But Han Poon had already directed the snow dragon peak technique at him, and a huge snow dragon flew at Seo Hyun. 
With incredible speed, Seo Hyun wanted to fend off the attack with the tenfold explosive fist technique, and a ball of blue energy flew at the ice dragon. But the dragon bit this ball and continued to rush at Seo Hyun with great speed. Han Poon has already foreshadowed the taste of his victory, and he began to say goodbye loudly to the young head of the clan. After thinking for a few seconds, Seo Hyun set up an ice wall around himself. The ice dragon crashed into her and shattered. The head of the clan, Seo Moon Ho, was shocked by what was happening because Han Poon's attack was too formidable. The head ordered everyone to build a great defense array together. Everyone from the Seo clan formed around the Seo Hyun cube. The young lord of the Kong clan sat excitedly and did not understand what kind of guy Seo Hyun was. The head of the So clan howled at the sky and used the great defense array technique. A huge column of light shot into the sky, illuminating everything around. The head landed on the ground. Brushing himself off, he thought, looking at Seo Hyun's ability, he already looks like a follower at the level of his strength and not an initial army. One innate talent is not enough for this. It seems that the revival of the So clan is just around the corner. Han Poon was kneeling on the ground with his head bowed, feigning defeat. Seo Hyun took pity on him as well, telling him to get out immediately. After all, the young head is not going to kill him. But Han Poon raised his head with an insidious smile and spat at Seo Hyun with some magical saliva. It was so fast and unexpected that it wounded Seo Hyun on the cheek. The young head got angry and finished off Kan Poon with his punch. Suddenly, Seo Hyun felt a sharp weakness. He realized that it was poison. The consciousness of the main character began to float away. His eyes began to darken and the last thing he saw before his eyes completely closed was the head of the clan standing next to him and his brother Man Sok running up to him. The next episode takes us to Seo Hyun's house. The young head is lying on the bed. All bandaged up and unconscious, next to him is the head of the So clan, Sister Uni and brother So Man Siok. The little sister was very scared for her brother. She was worried about the question of whether her brother would be okay with her. She turned to the chief elder with this question. Brother Man Siok calmed her down by saying that the young head had been given an antidote. But the chief elder anxiously warned that there was poison from Chinese quince in So Hyun's blood. Of course, the head of the clan gave him a resurrection pill, but it is not an antidote. And no one knows when Seo Hyun will wake up. Suddenly the doors opened and young Mr. Kam entered. In front of the head of the So clan, a casket opened in which a golden ball lay. The young master explained that it was a fourth grade resurrection pill and it was enough to instantly heal brother Seo Hyun. Seo Man Seok was most impressed by these words. It's not every day that you see the legendary antidote to all poisons, the fourth grade resurrection pill. But the head of the clan refused his offer, explaining that the young head had already taken the medicine and that the elder could not take it. These words offended the young head. He closed his fan and began to bang it threateningly on his hand. He reminded the elder that the So clan aspires to become their daughter, that it is only in the power of the Kam clan to expel the Han clan from Kwensen and make the So clan the first in the city. But the elder warned without any fear that now all decisions in their clan are made by Seo Hyun. But unfortunately he is now unconscious, and he asked the young gentleman to visit them a little later. The lord of the Kam clan laughed nervously. Was he furious that such small fry had the right to reject Kam Mu Jin himself? When Mr. Kam Mu Jin left, he warned that he would give them three days and if he did not receive an answer, the So clan would cease to exist forever. The elder noticed that Seo Hyun's condition had stabilized a bit, and he sent Uni and Man Sok home. With tears in her eyes, the little sister wanted to object, but we are being thrown onto the street. There is an irritated bee key in front of us. The servant wouldn't let her into Seo Hyun's chambers. She screamed at him that she was his cousin, and he had to let her in. Beak he assured him that he would not be able to justify himself to the young head when he woke up. The doors opened and an elder came out of Seo Hyun's chambers. He indicated to the servant that he could withdraw it. Hearing this, Beak he immediately rushed forward, but her path was blocked by Seo Man Seok. He didn't understand why a member of the Han clan was here. Beak he tried to explain that she went to the Han clan only because her father forced her. And by the way, he gave So Hyun a letter in the form of a divine pill of heavenly grass. But Man Seok still didn't want to let her in and held out his hands. But Bi Ki slipped under them, smiling slyly. Man Seok remembered that she had changed quite a lot, and he was wondering what she was up to. Bi Ki put the pill box on the table and saw it next to Seo Hai. She was very glad to see her, but only at the sight of Bi Ki, she only winced. Seeing her reaction, the white-haired Beck immediately began to ask her if she really did not remember her older sister at all. She rejected this assumption, saying that she was just thinking about how much people change. And she asked Bi Ki to leave, because Seo Hyun is not in the best condition right now. Hearing this, Beck's expression immediately changed. It became more sad and worried. The elder agreed with the words, warning that the head of the clan now needs complete rest. The head repeatedly asked them all to leave. Man Seok, Ani and Bi Ki did not test the patience of the head, and just obediently left. 
Then we move into Seo Hyun's consciousness. It was completely surrounded by bright flames and there was a beautiful solar system around. There were planets, stars and galaxies in it, and in the middle of it all was Seo Hyun's body. The young head did not understand where he was. He assumed that this could be the spirit world, but it did not look at all like the one he had seen in a previous life. Suddenly he noticed something behind him. A meteorite was rushing at him with great speed. He crashed into Seo Hyun and threw him somewhere to the side. A moment later, the young head woke up again in some unknown place. It was surrounded by stone islands with clouds around them. These islands, for some unknown reason, floated in the air, as if they were no different in weight from clouds. Seo Hyun noticed that, among other things, he was surrounded by some kind of golden ribbon. He took her and in a moment she took off to the top, dragging Seo Hyun with her. But at some point she stopped, making Seo Hyun nervous. This tape suddenly broke off and the young head began to fall down somewhere. After a few moments, he hit the ground hard, which caused him severe pain in his head. Seo Hyun suddenly realized that he was inside the face of the domain. Seo Hyun went on down the road. He was greeted by new locations. He was surrounded by universes wrapped in chains and the starry sky behind them. Seo Hyun was incredibly amazed by the fact that he got into the mini-universe of the face of the domain. The young head realized that after the battle with the immortal emperors, the spirit of the artifact survived. That simply because of serious damage, he did not feel its energy. Seo Hyun decided that he needed to thoroughly explore the local space, because he could find the spirit himself. The young head came up to the chains and began to study them carefully. He realized that he was seeing this for the first time, and he was interested in the question of what they were made of. He noticed a small purple light behind the chains, and touched it with his hand. In an instant, the light disappeared. The ground began to shake, and all the chains flew at Seo Hyun. The young head began to dodge them, and did not understand for what purpose the chains attacked him. Everything that was happening was clearly not for nothing. There was a huge hole in the middle of the chain, through which Seo Hyun saw the end of it, there was a huge sword. The young head realized that it was bad. What did these chains want from him? Barely dodging another chain, Seo Hyun realized that these chains move as if they are endowed with consciousness. To distract and figure it out, the young head used a technique. Instead of his one body, four more of the same appeared, so Hyun created his clones with his energy. The clones also dodged and ran away at first, but the chain eventually pierced each of them in turn. At this time, the real head was hiding behind a stone, watching what was happening. Suddenly, the earth split into separate pieces. The chain began to wrap around each stone. Seo Hyun used the technique again. Gathering his energy in the palm of his hand, he touched the stone. A blue flame resembling a spider web appeared around him, but its energy did not work beyond a couple of meters. It dawned on Seo Hyun that according to an intricate and ancient restriction system, a master with incredible abilities probably lives here. And if that's really the case, then, Seo Hyun stood up and tried to release his energy with more force. He should at least try, but his attempt was futile again. Seo Hyun went into his own thoughts. As he thought, inside the face of the domain there is a hidden place where a hermit who has reached the heights of cultivation lives, or as it is also called the cave of the monastery of many masters. Something told the young head that he was among them. Suddenly he noticed the child. He immediately calmed down a little, because he realized that he was very lucky, because this is the spirit of the artifact, and he is alive. Seo Hyun immediately started asking him if he was okay. But the child looked at him from under his brows and said that he did not recognize So Hyun at all. The young head frowned. Why does this child not remember him at all? Seo Hyun got this spirit in a fierce battle. But it seems that the memory of Seo Hyun was completely erased from him. Apparently it happened because of the attack of these three emperors. Seo Hyun promised that one day he would make them pay for it. Seo Hyun began to explain to the spirit that he was the owner of the face of the domain and, accordingly, its owner. Since Seo Hyun is the owner of the face of the domain, it turns out that he is to blame for the explosion. Seo Hyun began to explain that he was attacked by three immortal emperors, and so that the spirit would not fall into their hands, Seo Hyun used it as an amplifier and tried to kill them all on the spot. The girl's spirit was just silent. She understood that Seo Hyun had no other choice. The young head came up to the spirit and put his hand on her head, saying that they had been through a lot together, and that as soon as Seo Hyun recovered, they would definitely find these people together and avenge his death, he could be sure of that. The spirit nodded and asked to do so. Seo Hyun clarified what the spirit's abilities are at the moment. The spirit confessed that he had lost most of his power and memory, and he could only partially control the face of the domain. Seo Hyun told him not to worry and calmly get better here, because they are in no hurry. Suddenly, Seo Hyun heard that someone was calling him nonstop, and realized that he had been delayed in the face of the domain and it was time for him to return. We are greeted by Seo Hyun, who asks the spirit to bring him back to his world because his sister has already been waiting for Seo Hyun there. The spirit immediately agreed, and directed its energy at Seo Hyun, thereby sending him to his world. 
The young head squeezed his eyes shut and then opened his eyes. Standing in front of him was an elder, Ani and brother So Man Siok. Seeing that Seo Hyun finally woke up, a smile of delight appeared on his face. Man Siok helped the young head to get up, and his sister brought him some water. Seo Hyun stroked his sister's head and smiled warmly, because he noticed how much she was worried about him. The young head looked around his chambers, and suddenly noticed that there were pills from the Khan family on the table. The elder warned, saying that Biki had brought them two days ago. Suddenly, the doors opened and Biki entered Seo Hyun's chambers. Well, of course, you'll remember the son, that's a ray. She immediately ran up to her brother asking how he was feeling, and that she was very afraid that the effect of that pill would not be enough, and so she brought another one. The elder covered the young head with his body protecting him. Seo Hyun asked if her conscience was gnawing at her. Biki didn't understand what he was talking about. Seo Hyun asked his sister to give him a heavenly herb. The young head took it in his hand and began to process it with his energy. The heavenly grass began to slowly disappear. The elder was shocked, because just recently Seo Hyun asked him for ingredients in order to process them into medicine on his own. This is definitely the reason for his rapid progress. But right now, there was only one thing that mattered to Seo Hai. He processed the heavenly herb into medicine and gave it to the elder. The former head of the clan shouted for everyone to be on the alert. He put it in his pocket, and after a moment he realized that it was wolf poison. The elder started shouting at Biki as she tried to slip the head of the Seo clan. Wolf poison, which tends to follow the words of others. What does it mean? The girl fell to the floor in surprise. She was very scared, because now she is cornered. Seo Hyun asked why she did this, just to get the young head under control, or was she forced to do so by the Han clan? A worried Biki tried to justify that she didn't know anything. It was just some kind of misunderstanding. Seo Hyun noticed that this was not a misunderstanding, because a couple of days ago she didn't even want to talk to him. Why are you being so nice now? What is her motive? Seo Hyun chased her away, finally saying that she was lucky to stay in the clan, otherwise she would definitely not be alive. After a moment's pause, lowering her head, the girl could no longer remain silent and blurted out that it was really her plan to completely get him, Seo Hyun. Standing up and shaking herself off, the girl added in a calm voice that unlike Seo Hyun, she had done nothing wrong. She pointed out to him that he was not a man at all if he oppressed a woman like her. Seo Hyun stood with his back to her, calmly listening to everything. She came up behind him and took him by the shoulder. She decided to remind the young head of their childhood, how great it was for all of them. How Bi Ki's father beat and scolded Seo Hyun for the letters he wrote to her, but he doesn't have to worry anymore. She turned him towards her and added that a lot has changed since then, and that now no one will criticize Seo Hyun for liking Bi Ki. Standing next to her, Seo Moon Seok's brother and sister Ani, flushed, stood in shock at her insolence. Seo Hyun roughly pulled her hand away and started laughing loudly. The key stood in a misunderstanding, not understanding what was funny here. Seo Hyun rudely called her an insidious bitch and said that he had not liked her for a long time. But the girl did not give up. She promised So Hyun that she would definitely make him like her again. She asked if he even knew why she came to Kawansan. She was accepted into the Green Cloud Academy. The academy allowed them to pick up a foreign student from themselves and Biki arrived to find a suitable one here. The opportunity to study there, with Hyun, literally depends on her words. Biki came up to Seo Hyun again, taking him by the chin. What will the young head say to her now? But Seo Hyun once again mockingly joked at her that he was so desirable that now even the famous student of the Green Cloud Academy has moved on to seduction. After hearing these words of insult, the girl was terribly angry that she even decided to attack Seo Hyun and hit him. But suddenly, an elder stood in front of her to protect So Hyun, blocking Biki's path. The old man threatened her that she couldn't do anything to the head of the So Hyun clan right now. Clenching her fist, the white-haired girl Biki clenching her fist, realized the hopelessness of her situation. Now there are two strongest wars against her, and she is absolutely powerless against them. So she decided to run away before it was too late. But she threatened So Hyun that he would still get his way. So Man Seok's brother turned to his brother, noticed that no matter how you look at it, the opportunity to become a student of San himself was very good. Before Mang Seok could finish, the elder interrupted, objected to him, saying that he should not accept the status of the head of the Seo clan, because now Seo Hyun himself would look down on them, even if they arrived with a palanquin-covered stretcher, which are considered a means of transportation for noble persons, the rich. Scratching the back of his head, the young head objected to the elder, saying that if they really came here with a palanquin, Seo Hyun would still refuse them. The elder, with a slight anger, ordered So Hyun not to be clever. Watching all this, Sister Ani and Brother Seo Man Seok chuckled softly. The elder heard their laughter, looked menacingly in their direction, and the giggles of Ani and So Man Seok immediately stopped. Most importantly, the ceremony has already ended, and now they can go in search of the century-old Rise He Mushroom.